Hello and welcome to the lecture for module 11, Integrated Function of the Knee Complex. The objectives of this lesson are to explain the interdependent relationship of the knee complex as it works synergistically to produce force, reduce force, and stabilize the entire kinetic chain during functional movements. First, we'll discuss the knee extensors. The knee extensors include the rectus femoris, the vastus medialis, the vastus lateralis, and the vastus intermedius. The vastus lateralis originates on the lateral intermuscular septum and the gluteal tuberosity. It inserts on the patella and the patella retinaculum. The vastus medialis originates on the medial intermuscular septum, the medial lip of the lineal aspera, and inserts on the patella and the medial patellar retinaculum. The vastus intermedius originates on the anterior and lateral surfaces of the femur and inserts on the patella. The rectus femoris originates on the anterior inferior iliac spine and the superior rim of the acetabulum. It then inserts on the patella. The isolated function of the quadriceps is knee extension and hip flexion, and they also pull the capsule superiorly. This is called an articularis genu. The integrated function of the quadriceps is to eccentrically decelerate knee flexion, adduction, and internal rotation at heel strike. They also dynamically stabilize the knee, and they accelerate extension and external rotation during triple extension. If you remember from our last lecture, triple extension was that explosive power that an athlete needs to run or jump um, using the calf, the quadricep, and the gluteals as a team. The rectus femoris also decelerates hip extension and knee flexion. Chain reactions of the quadriceps. The, a weak quadricep will increase the eccentric load to the patellar tendon. And a, a short or tight rectus femoris creates an increased anterior pelvic tilt, which inhibits the gluteus maximus, thus creating kinetic chain compensations. Now let's discuss the knee flexors. The knee flexors include the hamstrings. There are three of them, the semitendinosus, the semimembranosus, and the biceps femoris. Also includes the gracilis, the sartorius, and the popliteus. The hamstrings all originate on the ischial tuberosity, but they didn't, the three insert in different areas. The biceps femoris inserts on the fibular head and lateral condyle of the tibia, and the, the semimembranosus inserts on the medial tibial condyle, while the semitendinosus inserts in the pace anserine, which is located on the medial tibial plateau. The isolated function of the hamstring muscles is knee flexion hip e and hip extension. They also produce tibial external rotation, that's the biceps femoris, and tibial internal rotation, that's the semimembranosus and the semitendinosus. The integrated function of the hamstrings is, is that they eccentrically decelerate knee extension prior to heel strike in gait. They eccentrically decelerate hip flexion at heel strike. They eccentrically decelerate lower leg internal rotation at mid stance, and that's primarily the function of the biceps femoris. They assist in eccentric deceleration of the anterior pelvic rotation, and they accelerate hip extension and external rotation. Ultimately, the hamstrings assist in the dynamic stabilization of the lumbo-pelvic hip complex. Chain reactions of the hamstrings. The hamstrings are known as the ultimate compensator. They can compensate for the abdominal complex, the hip extensor complex, the adductor complex, or the knee extensor complex. A short or tight hamstring creates a posterior pelvic tilt and a functional leg length difference. The biceps femoris becomes overactive when the gluteus maximus is weak or the psoas is tight. The biceps femoris creates a proximal tib-fib joint 
dysfunction. This affects sagittal plane dorsiflexion. This can also change the normal arthrokinematics of the tibiofemoral joint and patellofemoral joint during closed chain knee flexion. The knee rotators. There are internal rotators and external rotators. The internal rotators are the gracilis, sartorius, popliteus, medial grass, drocnemius, semitendinosus, and semimembranosus. The external rotators are the lateral gastrocnemius and the biceps femoris. The gracilis originates on the pubic symphysis and pubic ramus and inserts on the proximal medial surface of the tibia joining at the pace anserine tendon. The isolated function of the gracilis is to assist in a adduction and internal rotation of the femur. They assist in internal rotation of the tibia and assist in flexion of the tibia. The integrated function of the gracilis is that it assists, assists in deceleration of knee extension prior to heel strike in gait and assists in deceleration of the tibia in external rotation. It assists in dynamic stabilization of the hip in the frontal plane and the knee in the transverse plane. Chain reactions of the gracilis. The gracilis can cause medial, overactivity of the gracilis can cause medial knee tendinitis and overactivity can decrease frontal plane stability. The sartorius originates on the anterior superior iliac spine and inserts in the proximal medial surface of the tibia. The isolated function of the sartorius is to assist in hip flexion and external rotation, and it also assists in tibial internal rotation. The integrated function is that it eccentrically decelerates hip extension and internal rotation, and it eccentrically decelerates tibial external rotation. Chain reactions of the sartorius. Any transverse plane compensation at the hip, including internal rotation and tibial external rotation, lengthen the sartorius muscle. The popliteus. This muscle originates on the lateral condyle of the femur and inserts on the proximal posterior tibia. The isolated function of the popliteus is that it assists in internal rotation of the tibia tibiofemoral joint and it assists in knee flexion. Its integrated function includes assisting in eccentric deceleration of the tibiofemoral external rotation and it assists in dynamic stabilization of the tibiofemoral joint. Chain reactions of the popliteus. External rotation of the tibia during exercise creates an eccentric overload to the popliteus and this may create a popliteal cyst also known as a baker cyst. Ultimately, when we discuss the knee, what you'll notice the most is there's just not much around the knee to protect it. Uh, mostly, the knee is held together by the ligaments um, that, that stabilize it that we went over in an earlier chapter. The ACL, the PCL, the medial and lateral collateral ligaments are all important for stability. And the muscles that are right near the knee really don't have much of an effect on protecting the knee. They move the knee, but protection is not one of their best functions. We'll look to the hip proximally and the ankle dorsiflex or the ankle uh, distally to protect the knee. And we'll look for strength and stability and range of motion in these areas when the knee is affected. That's the end of the lecture for Module 11.